Hello everyone, it's Gengar1122 here. Welcome back to Super Mario 3D All-Stars Part 42. In the last episode, we started the Trial Galaxies, and we're going to resume with the remaining two galaxies we have left to do. Last time we pretty much completed the water park, so we have these two to choose from. Which one is rolling on on a metal ball and the other one I forget. I think we're going to resume with this one to start. Oh, okay, it's the bubble blast. That's the one where we had to navigate through the toxic area. This one's not at all any harder than what the metal one is. I think the metal one's gonna be way harder than this. Well, this one was typically easy when I first did it, so it shouldn't be too challenging. We'll have to see though. Oh, my God. 
Okay, for this one, this one's gonna be much more of a pain than the last one I did was. The toxic one's a lot easier to deal with. This one is just an absolute pain in the butt. So, we're just gonna be trying to get this to work. And <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Like I said, it's going to take us several tries because this one's very annoying.
Okay, the trial stars are done. And that one right there, like usual, is the most annoying one out of all three. Whoop to whoop is the second hardest, but the the rolling ball one, that one irritates me so much. You have to actually practice that a lot to get the mechanic to work correctly. Because, for me at least, the mechanic isn't as straightforward as I would like. That's the one thing that's irritating about that one. Now we can crush- oh wait. I forgot about this one. Let us begin. I didn't mean to go to this one, but might as well go ahead and start chapter one. Our story begins a very, very long time ago with a young girl. One day, this girl spotted a wasted spaceship holding a small star's child. What's your name? Are you lost? The girl asked the star child. I'm Luma. And I'm waiting for Mama. She's coming for me on a comet, said the star child, who had been waiting day and night. Don't worry, I'll wait with you, the little girl promised Wuma. At nightfall, the little girl borrowed her father's telescope and peered into the sky. She worked and worked, but she saw nothing. Hours turned into days and then years. But still, the sky revealed nothing. Finally, the little girl sighed and said, Wuma, if we stay here looking, if we stay here looking much longer, I'll be an old lady soon. But didn't she have an idea? Why don't we go out there and find your mother ourselves? The girl and Wuma fixed up the rusty spaceship and then the two set sail into the starry sky. And this is how the search for the Celestial Mother began. Days passed with no sight of the comet or even a single planet. Instead, asteroids extended for as far as the eye could see. If I had known it was going to take this long, I would have had to more jam, said the little girl, above the rumble of her belly. Before they left, she had packed all the essentials, telescope, butterfly, net, stuffed bunny, bread, milk, jam, and apricot flavored tea, but... I forgot to bring water. At this, Wuma burst into gales of laughter and the girl began to pout. As soon as I have star bits, I'll be fine, said Wuma. Want some? The little girl couldn't stay mad after hearing this. Uma continued to laugh and the girl couldn't help but join in. Alright, maybe it's just a nibble. Winning far out of the ship, the pair began to collect star bits with the girl's net and they almost fell out a few times but they kept on collecting. The star bits tasted like honey. A beam of light pierced through the ship's window. Thinking it was the morning sun, the girl peered through the window only to find a turquoise blue comet shearing at her, shimmering at her. The little girl shook the sweeping wind awake and shouted excitingly, We have to get to that comet. The pair descended on the comet and found that it was made of ice. They were tied in well, but Wuma's mother was nowhere to be found. Exhausted, the little girl sat down with a flop, utterly unable to take another step. Look. Peering down at the icy ground where Wimma was pointing, the girl suddenly noticed clusters of star bits encased in the ice. Pretty good, huh? Finding star bits is my specialty, said Wimma, beaming. There's ice here, but it's so warm, I'll bet there's water here too. The two decide to stay on the common for a while. Riding the turquoise comet, the pair continued their search for Wuma's mother. One night, the girl dreamed about her own mother. Where are you going? She asked her mother, retreating back. Without turning, her mother replied, Don't fret, dearest. 
I'm not going anywhere. I'm always watching over you, like the sun in the day and the moon in the night. A wave of sadness washed over the girl. What about when it wanes and I can't see the sun or the moon? Her mother thought for a moment before responding. I will turn into a star in the clouds and wait for your tears to dry. When she awoke, the girl's face was damp with tears. You have star bits in your eyes, said Luma to the girl. Wiping her face, the girl replied, These are tears, not star bits. I'm crying because I'll never see my mother ever again. At this, Luma began to cry too. Mama, oh, mama. Hair traveled through the starry skies, and though they encountered many other comets, not one of them held Wuma's mother. Wuma was despondent. Now, now, Wuma. The wind clouds won't go away if you keep crying, the girl said, giving Wuma a squeeze. I'll give you a pleasant if you stop. The girl closed her eyes and said gently, I'll take care of you. With those words, she felt a small spark in her heart. The kitchen will go here and the library will go over there. The girl said busily to herself, we'll put the gate there. Ever since the girl took Wuma under her care, she's been bustling about at a feverish pace. It's a lot of work, but it's worth it to make a happy home. It turned out that Starbits weren't the only thing buried in the ice. There were tools and furniture unlike any they have ever seen, and the girl used them to build a home. Looking at the completed house, Wuma remarked, Don't you think it's awfully big for just the two of us? With a library, bedroom, kitchen, fountain, and gate. It was certainly spacious, but still something seemed to be missing. Only my father, brother, and mother were here, the girl said wistfully. Indeed, the house was too large for its two small residents. That night, clutching her favorite stuffed bunny close to her heart, the girl fell asleep in the starship. Then one day, while the girl sat sipping tea, a tiny apricot colored planet appeared on the horizon. From the planet, an art of the same color emerged. Do you two know each other? The girl asked the two mamas gleefully. Despite the girl's excitement, they seemed uneasy. The two mamas neither drew closer nor backed away from each other. Instead, they just stared. Then one Wuma broke the silence. My mama. At once, the apricot Wuma parroted back, My mama, my mama. My mama, my mama. The two Wumas began to dance around the girl frantically, and neither showed any sign of stopping. The girl was so charmed by this adorable scene that she couldn't help but laugh, and that's when something very strange happened. Suddenly, more Wumas began to pop out from the apricot planet. They were different colors, but they all shouted the same thing. My mama. My mama. The sight of all the shouting Wumas only made the girl laugh harder. What am I going to do with all these children? The Wumas just stared blankly as she doubled over laughing. I guess we'll have to name each and every one of you. Tomorrow, once she had finished naming them all, she would begin moving all the Wumas into the new house. That should do it for today. So that's pretty much the sto Rosalina story, where she she pretty much was without her mother for a while, and and the Wumas didn't seem to have one either. But the, that's how the Wumas and Rosalina uh, got their friendship, which is pretty cool, honestly. Well, we should have about 12 minutes left to do in the episode, so I think now we're just going to go to the bedroom and actually, uh, continue where we left off.
Alright, we have time to do one episode of of one of these three, Fleece Flame, Garden, or Hunting Climb. Since we only have time to do one anyway, I think we'll go ahead and do the Hunting Climb Galaxy. Which this one should be pretty similar to the Honey Hive Galaxy that we did early on in Super Mario Galaxy. Yep, we're just using the, the bee suit and climbing upward using the honey hive, or the honeycombs that are around the area. Yes. Well, this is where we're going to end the video off. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, subscribe if you're new, and thank you for watching, and see you next time. Bye bye, everyone.